Welcome to the Healthy Habits Podcast for Coco from Ghana. Today we have a very special guest for you, skeleton athlete Akwasi Frimpong, who is gearing up to compete in the Winter Olympics 2018 in Pyeongchang, South Korea. Akwasi, a warm welcome to you. Thank you for having me on this podcast today. We will be talking about your healthy habits, the things that you do and eat to stay in shape and, well, get ready for the Olympics. Could you tell us first, for the listeners who might not know, real quick, what is skeleton exactly? Skeleton is like the sister sport of bobsled, but this time it's just you by yourself, laying on your belly, on a really small, like a cookie sheet, and going head first about 80, 90 miles per hour with your chin about three inches from the ice, trying to navigate through about a mile long of an ice channel. That is a real extreme sport. Sure is. <laughs> Well, Akwasi, you grew up in the Netherlands, but were born in Ghana, and you lived there until you were about eight years old. Do you remember a lot from that time, the, the food, the sights, the life? I remember a lot from Ghana still at the age of uh, eight years old <clears throat> before I left. You know, I lived with my grandma, Grandma Minka, um, after my mom left when I was about three years old, so about 1989. She left the Netherlands to prepare a better future for, my, for our family. And uh, in the meantime, I lived in Ghana. You know, I was really close to my grandma. I went to church with her every Sunday. My grandma was a really good cook. She did a really good job taking care of like 10 kids in a really small, tiny room. Uh, we were very poor, but we never felt poor because we had each other. We, I always knew when it was Christmas time because that was the only time we had a full egg or a full bottle of Coca-Cola. And I knew it was Christmas, right? Because normally we don't get that other things that I remember too is uh, you know we had you know one of the presidents that was taking over the country and my grandma didn't vote for him so they came over to to our house and you know took a lot of things away from my grandma it was a really horrible horrible time that that moment I really remember that as a little kid and we had to hide under the bed um, so that was that was not such a good experience um, but other great experience were the friends and the people that we had around us people always came to our house to watch TV when the Ghana Black Star was playing so there was uh, some great time, um, and, and like I said, the food, you know, one of my favorite food, of course, the Ghana Jello fries with some good salad. Um, I also like, um, you know, Benku. I remember a lot still. <laughs> Your mother is uh, the famous gospel singer Esther Amoako. Uh, so I'd like to know, did her music, her famous music in any way aid you in your sporting career? Yeah, I even helped write one of her songs. One of her famous songs is called He Can Do It, all right? And uh, I actually helped her write that song. So that's actually pretty cool. It was really, uh, it really got, it really hit it um, into the market of Ghana and around the world. But her spirit and her way of doing things, like, you know, how hard she worked and, you know, how hard she was really disciplined about making music uh, because she believed that the people out there needed to hear something like that and have hope. And she really encouraged me to go after my dream and work really hard as she did herself as well. Your speed suit is adorned with Kente designs, and I believe you have an Adinkra symbol on your arm? Yep. Could you tell us what this means to you? It means a lot. You know, the Adinkra um, signs some people call Jinyami as well. I'm from the Ashanti tribe in Ghana, and um, it really represents who we are. Uh, the suit obviously has the Kente cloth in, in it as well, because, you know, that is a traditional thing. You know, uh, we love to wear our traditional outfit to church and different uh, occasions in Ghana. Um, the color is bright, loud, and super Ghanaian. So I like to be, uh, you know, when I'm representing my country at the Olympic Games in 2018, I like to be disruptive, right? I want to be loud. I want to show all the people in Ghana what a joy moment it is for us to represent Ghana at the Olympics. I think that's incredibly bold. <laughs> you say <it> is. <laughs> so um, what kinds of food do you eat to keep your body in shape for the Olympics? Obviously, I eat a lot of different food. You know, um, my wife helps me prepare a lot of good food as well, uh, just because there's not always enough time. So I'm really grateful for her help. But some of the dishes that I eat, I really like in the morning, I have like an oatmeal, a piece of bananas fruit. I like to have eggs, either I boil it or I cook it, it, it depends how I feel that day. Um, a little piece of toast if I need that as well. So those are like my morning dishes. Um, I make sure to have snacks on me as well because you know I travel about 50 minutes drive away for, for my training. So I have like snacks like crackers or I have like a piece of apple or something like that with me when I'm done with training. And when I come home, I have some of the leftover of the night before. And those could be anything from uh, you know rice with chicken, jollof rice. I, I, we love to eat yams in our home. We love yams. So we like to eat yam, yams with fish. 
Um, we also like to just make some Dutch dishes as well, which is called stampot, which is uh, basically a, a potatoes a puree with uh, with broadwurst and and with some uh, with some vegetables. So, speaking of which, do you have any like guilty pleasures that you'd like to eat, which may not be as healthy for you? Yes, I have. I have a few. <laughs> we actually have in our house here in the U.S. We have the Dutch uh, strobe waffle uh, cookie maker. So we we make Dutch strobe waffles. So in the past, Dutch football legend Johan Cruyff fought to put you in the spotlight. What's it like to have a figure like that give you his vote of confidence? It's an emotional moment every time I get this chance to talk about Mr. Cruyff. Um, really, a guy who I learned a lot from. He's like a mentor to me. And uh, he's so respected around the world, uh, in the Netherlands, in Spain, and even in Africa. Um, you know, a lot of people respect, you know, the legacy he has left behind for a lot of us. And the fact that somebody like that actually supported me, was behind a kid from Ghana, right? He saw me as a human being, as a person, not like at the Dutch immigration place where they saw me as a number. Johan Krauss saw me as a person, and he believed that I was a hero to a lot of people, especially for people in Ghana. And I continued to work hard to prove to, to the rest of the world and to also show that Johan Krauss was right, that I could become uh, you know, a hero, but most importantly, I could become uh, a figure to help people in my country to get out of their comfort zone. That's one of my biggest goals, is to show people in my country that we have what it takes to be the best in the world. Is there anything you'd like to add about your healthy habits? Uh, you know, in my sports as, a, as an athlete, you know, at the end of the day, you learn how to slide, you learn how to push a sled, you learn how to lift weights, you learn how to run. We all learn that. But the one, the one thing that distinguished between me and other athletes or, or athletes among each other is, I think, the mental game. And I think that it's a really important thing that, you know, the mental game is super important for anything that you do in life, that, that you have a strong mental head, you know, on. And one of the most important things I'd like to leave behind for the listeners out there, and I hope that that will help them, is one thing that I learned from my grandma, Minka, when I was eight years old and leaving Ghana. One of the things she told me is, Akosi, what you need for success is already in you. It is a matter of believing in yourself, having the will to work hard, and never give up. We have what it takes to be the best in the world. Let's go after it. Thank you so much for being here, Akwasi, and we wish you the best of luck in your Olympic endeavors. Thank you for having me on the show. And to all listeners, this was the Healthy Habits Podcast for Coco from Ghana. Until next time.